Let's see if audio is working. It may be working. For this, I don't know. Unless you're talking on headphones. So I can monitor. Sounds like it's working. Sounds really far away, though. Audio is working. Good. No, uh, the plan is to not drop the side panel on this one. Although, I've been informed by the owner of the company that I cannot damage the side panels on these. Uh, Track box systems. I'm not even sure how they're constructed. I'm assuming it's all aluminum. I don't really know. But I've been assured that I'm not dropping the side panel and damaging this one. This is not exactly what I planned. I was going to do this over carpet uh, very carefully. But here we are in the, the studio doing it the old-fashioned way. This is an exciting shot for anybody watching. There's a uh, light glare on the box here I'll try to adjust for that here we go less light glare i'm going to use this uh, sharpie to cover my address so that i don't accidentally tell everybody where i live because then they would probably send me lavish gifts and uh just money lots of money which you don't have to do that so i'm just going to cover up my address here and save your money what the hell is this this is an unboxing I need to get this unboxed and start testing it and I figured why not why not I have a camera we have the technology let's just do a Friday night stream yeah it, it, you know it's 10 50 p.m. for you too J.W. Dickinson and uh Falcon Heavy? No, not Falcon Heavy. This is not a Tesla product. This is a Falcon Northwest product. Yeah, uh, the original Sebastian is uh, Sebastian Peak, not Linus Sebastian. Pretty sure I'm older than him. I don't think I can even get all this in the frame. This is a, a pretty big box, considering... It's a small computer. This is not a, a Talon. We've looked at a couple of Talon um, mid-towers in the past. And those are in even bigger boxes. This is uh, the Frag Box. The return of the Frag Box. I think it came back last fall. I was at the RDNE 3 announcement. And I remember seeing this news, and it was more exciting to me than what I was learning about with graphics cards at the time. You know, hold on a second. I'm going to um, tweet this out just to get maximum exposure. Not like camera exposure. That would be turning the brightness up. Here, hold on a second here. My apologies. It's live. You switch from top chat to live chat so I can see everyone's comments as they come in. I need to use some software that puts the, the chat comments on the screen, like a scrolling along the side or something. So you feel like it's more interactive. This is not interactive. This is a person standing behind a camera with a computer on a table that I haven't taken out of the box yet. Just one moment while I uh, use this phone here to uh, to tweet out that I'm live right now. See, it says it says on my phone. If it'll focus. It says on my phone that I'm live right now, but I'm just gonna uh, put a link to this onto Twitter with my phone. I'm gonna click share. Okay, copy link. Go ahead and tweet it out. It 
that air here. Paste. Tweet it out. Okay, I think we're done. I think that's it. I've done all the things. Tweeted it. Okay, I'm sorry that it's time for bed, but this is more important than bed. Bed can wait. Sleep can wait. Because I don't know if you're aware of this or not. Um, and I, I'm sure everybody is going to really appreciate this. But let's go back in time. While I have you here. While I can inflict this upon you. And you can't do anything about it. Unless, of course, you choose to leave. Okay, let me move the mic so it's a little bit louder. Okay, so let's go back in time. Google.com. Archive.org. We're going to go to Falcon Northwest website. Way back in the day. Let's go back to 2003. When the original frag box was released. Now, frag box was not the system that we will see today upon its original release. Let's go to it's July. So let's go to July of 2003. And here's the Falcon Northwest. Let me, let me close some of this stuff. So here's the, the uh, Falcon Northwest uh, website, 2003, July. So this is 20 years ago. And the frag box was this. Fast, light, affordable with a shot of lethal. It's in what well, it looks like an acrylic enclosure. It looks a lot like, uh, I don't know, like maybe one of those shuttle systems back in the day. And... I don't know, maybe even shades of the G4 cube, dare I say. But it was an affordable system. It was $9.95. And it was limited, though, because it was based on a, a small form factor board, non-standard components. So let's go forward to 2004. Let's see what the Falcon Northwest website looks like in 2004. And here is the frag box. This is a lot closer to what you're going to see today. And it, it got more oblong. It's kind of like a, a big shoe box with a handle on top. And it's, according to this, the world's first unlimited small form factor PC. So we're using a standard micro ATX board now. And standard components. And it, when... They wrote this, there wasn't anything that it couldn't fit. That was back when a dual slot video card was a big deal. This is a standard power supply. Times have changed, of course, and with the new system, there's even more room for activities inside because they're using an SFXL power supply instead of standard ATX. So with this uh, background information out of the way, let's get this system out of the box somehow without toppling the microphone or breaking anything. This is probably double box. Let me just get the first box out of the way. Oh yeah, there's a second box in here. It'll be a little bit easier to uh, maneuver. So first we have some uh, nice thick foam. They use really dense foam. It's not like you're getting styrofoam that's going to break everywhere and make a mess. This packaging is nice enough, you want to keep it and treasure it. I'm going to use this as a serving tray. My wife won't be mad that I bought the frag box because I served her breakfast in bed with this foam tray. I'll even make homemade biscuits. We have an instruction sheet. And check it out. This, this is very ventilated. You've got perforations or whatever the technical term is for that all over the uh, the side here. You can see air comes in the side, goes out the top, which is also ventilated. And look at that. Both sides have the ventilations. And there's a screen filter. Oh, look at that. Screen filters. So you don't have to worry about a big mess, especially you cat owners. Or, like me, German Shepherd owners. And that looks suspiciously like... A triple slot NVIDIA Founders Edition graphics card from the 40 series right there. They're taking this seriously. It's uh, It's got full-size components in it. It's got the same stuff you could put in a Talon mid-tower desktop, but it's in 
a small portal. And who doesn't want a, a handle? I mean, who doesn't want to carry their PC around? Well, the technical term is holes. Okay, thank you, Francois. It has holes in it. You get this first box, or second box out of the first box, and then somehow get the first box out of the way without dropping the second box. A lot of effort noises. I've got to get in better shape. It's embarrassing. Now we're going to get this box out of the way somehow. Okay, before we proceed, as a science experiment, I want to measure this shoe box. Now this is a standard Timberland boot box for a stylish pair of shoes I recently purchased. And it measures, as you can see here, let me angle the camera down. This measures a little over 14 inches long. I'm using United States measurements by a little over 10 inches wide and it's about five five and a half inches tall so if we're going to be comparing the frag box to a shoe box just imagine this like an inch or two bigger this way and this way and about I don't know this much taller so not not a huge footprint by any means not much bigger than a shoe box. So there's the smaller box. This is a lot more reasonable, but they're not going to ship this to you because uh, you know UPS or FedEx would destroy it. Now they use UPS, which I appreciate because you know UPS tends to do a better job, at least for me. But I'm gonna open this up. It's also generously padded in here. All their stuff is very, very well packed. And you're paying for the premium PC experience. I didn't go through the secondary box that has all the ex extra stuff and the coffee and the, the cool mug you get. We can look at that too, but I just wanted to get to this system. It's been sitting in my living room behind my wife's easy chair for a week and it was time. Okay, so here, you, you get an idea of how well packaged these things are. More dense foam, even denser, actually, than before. Cloth bag. You know what? I've done very little research about this particular unit. I was looking at the old uh, website archives. This feels like aluminum. I was wondering if that would be extruded or milled aluminum as well. <sighs> And before you start complaining about the price, uh, let's talk about the price. I think this particular configuration is about as high end as you can get, but I'll, I'll verify that when we get it powered on. But it's, it's, uh, it's hard to get some of these components actually. I think, I could be wrong, I think this one has a 13900KS in it, which is rare. Uh, the only listings for it right now are out of stock or marked way up to 950 to a thousand dollars or more check this out big uh, big power cable as well the power this is a 1000 watt SFX L power supply all of these frag boxes use the same Silverstone SFXL power supply. Let me get this box down and out of the way. And get the frag box up on the table. Here is where the handle really came in handy. I didn't drop it. That camera racks focus incredibly fast. Yes, it is a Sony. It's a Sony, um, the E mount 1.4, it's 15 millimeter G. It's extremely fast autofocus. You can focus very close to the camera as well. 
Sony has the best autofocus in the business. It's ridiculous. Anyway. Yeah, it's the E-mount, but it's it's not a G master lens, but it has the G glass, so the uh, 15 millimeter 1.4. It's a little pricey. I got it on sale at B and H Photo, but I think I still spent $650 on it. So we're gonna take the protective paneling off of this, and then for uh, figure out how to get it out without damaging anything. Okay, so it looks like the bag opens here. This is such a high-end thing. And it's a lot smaller than I was imagining. It really isn't much bigger than that Timberland boot box. It's taller. It is... It's a very handsome system. Look at this. Let's uh, let's do some measuring. Yeah, I mean, if you if you wear large shoes, if you bought a pair of work boots or something, they might come in a box close to this size. But it's 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 a bread box. If Josh were here, I wish he was. It's the size of a bread box. Put a couple of loaves of uh, homemade, like two pound loaves in there. Perfect. So let's let's measure it up. The front is just about exactly ten and a half inches wide. Let's see how deep this thing is. Just about sixteen inches. Now you have to go out to closer to sixteen and a half if you're factoring in the the very edge of the side panel screws, but and then the height. Let's see what the height is. Without the feet, it's just over eight inches. If you include the feet and the handle, how tall is that? Ten? About ten inches tall? Weight. Uh, dense. It's not light. I'm incredibly strong, so this looks really easy but I'm struggling. I have no idea how much this weighs. 20 pounds? 25 pounds. 28 pounds. I should have my scale down here. I don't know how much it weighs. Let's see what's inside. Look at that. There's the PC Perspective emblazoned on this metal plate on the back. Because it was custom made just for us, just for this review. I'll try to argue that, well, you know, it has our name on it, so we really should keep it now. That'll be my strategy when I'm sent a return label. It's like, no, 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 no. It has my name, it has our name on it. You can't take it back. Look at this side panel. That's not a side panel, it's a top panel. Curious as to the construction. Okay, so the handle, if you can see this, where's the lighting? There are screws. This is aluminum or aluminium. The handle is screwed to the top. The handle appears to be some sort of aluminum extrusion. Feels very nice. You can't feel it through the video though, so don't try. Side panels are also aluminum, aluminium. And another side panel, it's just the same. And look, a magnetic area, oh, it came off, okay. So here you have a magnetic screen filter. Does it go this way? Yes, it does. Very nice. Keep your case clean. All right, somebody sent a super chat. Steve, K 
Curious on your thoughts. I have a Ryzen 5 3600. Should I just get a Ryzen 7 or 9 that works in this MOBO? Or go to something else? Intel question mark? I mostly game. And my better monitor is 1440p. have a 3070 RTX. Francois is absolutely right. 5800X3D. Whatever motherboard you have that takes a Ryzen 5 3600 almost definitely would accept a 5800X3D after a BIOS update. And that is such an amazing deal. It is just, it's ridiculous how good it is. And you're not, even if you have, you know, the world's fastest graphics card. Is this the 4090? Yeah, is this 40? put a 4090 in there. And the 5800X 3D is still not going to be holding you back. That is an amazing product. It basically kept a lot of enthusiasts from upgrading to AM5 when that came out. AMD made AM4 too good with the 5800X 3D for anybody to really need to upgrade to AM5 yet. And those processors are cheap. I mean, for what they are, buy a 5800X 3D for around $300 these days. Drop it in your existing board, existing DDR4 memory. It's just incredible. Okay, let's get back to business here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So you can see with the side panel removed... Falcon Northwest is doing some things with fans here. So we have a couple of intake fans that will take in air from, you know, the highly ventilated side panel. And they're pushing the air directly into the side of the GPU. I thought this was going to have a, like a Founders Edition card. It has a PNY, but it's still a triple slot. Uh, NVIDIA 40 series graphics card, it looks like. And yes, there's the 12 volt high power connection. So this is indeed an NVIDIA graphics solution. And big 280 millimeter radiator here. On the other side, we get a glimpse of the SFXL power supply. Here are the fans for that radiator, the 240 millimeter fans. Motherboard down below, and you can see the top of the cooling block. This is the same cooling solution that you'll find in their Talon uh, desktops. There's even some more space in here. Look, you have extra space inside here. You can put your arm in there. You can put stuff in it. Store tools for later use. So this could be even smaller if they wanted it to be. But then you wouldn't have room for the big cooler on top. I do like this. Now the Tiki, very nice system, small form factor. They do an incredible job with ventilation of uh, basically this kind of stuff to make sure that even a full-size GPU, high-end CPU can breathe inside of such a thin enclosure. It's like four inches wide. This is obviously a lot bigger, and they're able to do things like put a 280 millimeter rad in there. And, and really, if, if you put this, you know, on its side, this would be a very compact tower. It's hard to tell on this. I wish I had a Coke can to show you scale. But it's, this is not big. This would fit neatly off to the side on your desktop. Put a monitor next to it. This is not a large system at all. Like here's my hand. Here's the system. It's not big. But it's uh, interesting because unlike a lot of, and here's the bottom by the way. You can see the feet. And then another intake here. Although no bottom mounted uh, power supply, it's kind of curious. I just have the uh, bottom of the motherboard visible through there. Should fire this up and share the display and look at the specs. See exactly what's going on in here. It is nice to know we have a uh, full micro ATX board in here. So potentially, I could put a PCI Express capture card in here. I'd have to sacrifice one of the fans or order one of these with a dual slot cooler instead of a triple and uh, 
put yourself a capture card in there. Very big on PCI Express capture cards for their reliability. Turn this into the streaming PC of my dreams. Do I have a regular ATX motherboard laying around for scale? Yes. Try to find one that's not connected to a liquid cooler. Hold on, here's one. Okay, so here is a MSI Z690 Tomahawk motherboard. And of course, ATX motherboards are 9.6 by 12 inches. Is that what it is? So the case is just a little bit wider than an ATX motherboard half an inch it's about 10 inches wide and then the footprint is a little bit bigger too set it this way so ATX motherboard for scale a little bit bigger than an ATX motherboard so you probably could not build a system this small with ATX unless you made a lot of compromises. So micro ATX to the rescue. Extra space. Still has a lot more versatility than using mini ITX. I like mini ITX. For a while I thought I didn't need anything more than mini ITX. But in my old age I've decided I actually want expansion slots. Even though we live in the era of single single GPU. No more SLI. SLI is gone. The dream has died. Yeah, look into plugging this in. We have an HDMI. HDMI cable. Will that focus? Focus the HDMI cable. There's an HDMI cable. I can plug that in. I can get this going. But at the very least, I have shown you the inside of the system as far as I can without starting to take things apart. Now the specs, as I understand them, should be a uh, Intel Core i9-13900KS processor, a NVIDIA RTX 4090 graphics card, a bunch of uh, DDR5 memory. It's an Asus Tough board that they put in all of these. If you get the Intel solution, it is a B760M, I think. I'll have to look up the uh, specs. Yes, I'm reviewing this system. So this is just unboxing, taking a quick look at it. I'll be doing a full review. I want to know what uh, thermals are like. I want to know if any power limits are in place on the CPU out of the box. How it performs with and without said power limits. If there's any concern about thermals. Although, honestly, just like with cases like the Dan cases, uh, A4 SFX, when you have perforated side panels like this, and the top is perforated, you even have a ventilated um, area on the bottom. There's so much airflow can, you know, enter, pass through the system that I don't think there's gonna be any concern about thermals with this. It's just how effective is this 280 millimeter um, all-in-one liquid cooler? We already know it's effective because they use it in the Talon. We've tested that before. And this graphics card is not suffocating because you actually have additional air being drawn in from outside the case, blowing at the intake fans on the front of the graphics card. So that should be uh, should be good. Let me see if I can grab a longer HDMI and get this connected so I can boot it up for the first time. And verify what I've just been speculating. If you'll stand by. You know, I should probably get a keyboard and a mouse, too. 
Well, one thing at a time. All right, where's that other HDMI cable? Over here somewhere. So there's an HDMI cable of some kind, a power cable. Let's get this fired up. Uh, is this plugged in? Okay. Here we go. It's already switched on. Let's see if we have any kind of input. Output. Input or output. No keyboard detected. That's right. All right. I'll be right back. Okay. So some talk about price, doing something for half the cost. Oh, hey, Kent is here. So feels like a similar machine, only marginally bigger using a classic micro HX board and ATX PSU would be very achievable for half the price though. Here is where I disagree. Just because if you price out the components that are actually in this, the motherboard was on Newegg.com for 173, I think. A good 280 millimeter AIO is going to cost you at least 150 to 200 dollars. You have the memory, which has gotten a lot cheaper. You can get 32 gigs of DDR5 for about 95 dollars now, uh, and this is like 6,000, I think, speed. Graphics card, the cheapest 4090 you can buy is, of course, $1,600. And you know, the stuff adds up. The case itself would add quite a bit. Once you get into the world of, you know, all aluminum custom enclosures, you're talking a good three to five hundred dollars probably if it was made on larger scale it could get cheaper but you wouldn't sell a lot of units if you're trying to sell something like this on its own uh, there's some steel here it's not all aluminum I don't think maybe it is but it's I think my total cart price on Newegg was in the thirty six to thirty eight hundred dollar range and I hadn't added a case I didn't have an operating system uh, there was there was that case. I'm trying to think of the name. Cerberus. Can't maybe you can help me out. There there was a mini or a micro ATX specific portable case with an integrated handle. That was popular with you know a subset of the enthusiast community a couple years ago, but it has no 40 series support. I've looked through forums and things. It didn't seem to have the clearance for the cable. You could do a nine a 90 degree adapter but it still didn't really work if you want to do a high-end 40 series card so I I don't know I do think that if you were interested in bulk storage uh, you'd want to go with a mid tower over something like this although I I do think there is room for standard hard drives uh, I think the configuration tool only showed M.2s though 
Wasn't I don't think it was the Bit Phoenix Prodigy because that was ITX, wasn't it? Or no, originally I think it was a Micro. But this is the the one I was thinking of was um, a metal enclosure, and it was more of a boutique thing, and it was two hundred and eighty five dollars, I want to say. But out the door pricing on this system, if it's a, a, um, set up the way I thought it was, it's probably around five thousand dollars. So it's it's about a thousand more than you could potentially build yourself. Given the exorbitant price these days of a 13900KS. And the 13900KS itself is not for everyone. It's unnecessary, really. If you're just gaming, if you're looking for a value, get the 13600K. It's fantastic. But if you want the fastest in the world, as you know, from a frequency standpoint, anyway. I should probably get a better monitor set up here because uh, I can barely see this. I'm looking at a tiny preview window. Maybe I can make this full screen. Hold on a second here. Oh, yeah. Sliger, Slider, whatever it is. Yeah, perfect portable system would be a laptop. You're right. This is... It's interesting that there's they're doing this again because... It's, there are no LAN parties anymore, really, so. Full screen output display. What can I do here? Apparently nothing. All right, fine. You can see a little bit, but the system, let's look at the, uh, I, I literally cannot see the screen right now. Where's the system summary? Uh, I've got to uh, make this display bigger somehow. This is an oversight. I'm used to using OBS. Yeah, I can see a tiny bit. Display, no. Where's just the, uh, the summary? What is in here? Let's look at the, the good old... Task manager, I guess, is the quickest way I can think of to do it without looking. Under performance, they have 64 gigs of memory, it looks like. It is, in fact, the 13900KS. Graphics card is a 4090. Uh, I mean, on the stream, you'll be able to see this just fine. For some reason, I have it on a quarter screen preview window. And I did not do a dual monitor like I should have for this. So yeah, this, the specs are a little bit better than I thought because it has double the memory. I thought this would have 32 gigs. It has 64. The disk drive is probably a very fast one as well. Okay. It's a, it's a Gen 4 drive, it looks like. So Kingston, it's one of those Kingston Fury drives, probably in the 70 to 7300 megabytes per second range for sequential reads. So... All told, with the 64 gigs of memory, this is, uh, you know, my use case for this would be uh, like professional workstation, portable workstation, where workstation laptops, and I have tried them, I can tr I'll try some more, I have at least one more on loan from Lenovo to test, but the last workstation laptop that I looked at was very hot it ran so hot that it felt slower than using a a machine with much lower specs in a desktop format i struggle with those it was an 11th gen though and those were very very hot and intel mobile processors in the workstation side they're like 65 watts these days and it's it's very hard to keep those cool even with the thicker chassis of those workstation laptop systems but something like this where i could literally put you know, put this in the trunk, take a small monitor with me. If I had to go on location somewhere, just give me a power outlet and a folding table. This would work a hell of a lot better for production than a laptop would. Can't beat laptops for portability, obviously, but... Why am I encountering resistance here? Oh, I see. You have to kind of slide it back. Set it down. 
slide it back. Screw it in place. The captive thumb screws are convenient. So, I don't know if the side panels have to be on. Seems like it's strong enough without the side panels in place. Should probably have the chat up. 64 is overkill. Not if you're, uh, you know, editing 8K video. Okay, so Falcon Northwest in the chat. Thank you. Has two two and a half inch bays or one three and a half plus the M dot twos on the motherboard. So, oh yeah, <laughs> and the, yeah, there's there's really really compelling deals on M dot two storage these days. Anyway, we talk about this every week on the podcast. On this motherboard, you could populate it with a couple of two or four terabyte M dot twos, and you wouldn't need anything else. I don't know why you'd want to put a spinning hard drive in a high end system like this anyway. I grabbed one of these. I was going to put this in the streaming PC just for some extra storage. This is a two terabyte drive. Drives like this are just ridiculously cheap. And there's Gen 4 stuff. This is a Gen 3 drive. It's just one I had laying around. But there are Gen 4 drives, two terabytes, or well below Ryan's law of uh, 10 cents per gig. So, okay, two by two and a half and one three and a half. So you could, if you want to, you could put standard SATA SSDs in here. And a hard drive, but I don't know. Personally, I don't know if you can hear this. I've got the microphone right here. We're obviously, we're not under load or anything. But with the this is with it like four inches away from the case. You would, if you were really close to a system like this, like I am, as ventilated as it as it is. I guess modern hard drives don't make a lot of noise. I don't know. I just like the idea of keeping it as quiet as possible using solid state storage. 20 terabyte game library. Okay, fine. Yeah, if, if you've got that much space, you're probably using some kind of high-end um, external storage. At least I would I would think so if you're doing like production stuff. Uh, I don't know if you're editing video off of a 20 terabyte spinning hard drive. Okay, patch on the bottom, access M.2s. Okay, so that's a hatch. Interesting. I'm going to turn this on its side while it's running, which is probably not recommended, but you know, whatever. So this unscrews, if it will focus. And then this would uh, provide access to M.2s, which, as Kel points out, not there anymore. Uh, it's a great idea. That's one of those the things I like about the Intel uh, Nook Extreme or Nook Extreme or however you pronounce that is on the bottom there was a, a port you could open and pop in an M.2 drive without having to take the whole thing apart. So that's a nice idea. <laughs> Brett, it's not it's not one gigabit per second networking. Uh, well, yes, it is, as you know if you watch the podcast, which it feels like was days ago. It was Wednesday night and I just published it this morning, but I picked, for my pick of the week, 2x2 two two external storage. And let's see if this one has it. Yeah, this one has a 20 gigabit per second um, USB-C. I can test that uh, new Crucial drive with this. Crucial is sending the 2x2, two two, the X10 Pro. They confirmed that uh, yesterday. So you could take this with you somewhere, connect an external drive like that, you're getting 2,000 megabytes per second transfer speeds from an external drive. They're sending a two terabyte. That thing is well under $200 for extremely fast external storage. So, hmm. Kent says that ASRock has been putting ribbon display port connectors on the back of some of their new boards. You check out the end of the GPU closest to the front of the chassis. Oh yeah, the bracket. Okay, cool. I didn't know that was on here as well. It makes sense. On the desktop systems, the talons, I've looked at a couple of those. There are these metal brackets that make it impossible for the GPU to move. Yeah, I can see it. I don't know if I can get it on camera. Move the camera a little bit closer here. So down in here, 
down in there where my finger is, there's a metal bracket screwed to the case floor. It's hard to see. There's a metal bracket screwed to the case floor in there. You can just see the screws right above my finger here. And then that's screwed into the back of the... Uh, I'm moving my IKEA table around. That's what the shaking is. But the GPU is not moving. I'm glad the uh, the fans are not spinning because I just stuck my finger right into the fan. Anyway, yeah, that's the uh, the frag box. And really, it doesn't seem like the form factor, the handle design, the overall size has really changed since 2004. Yeah, 800 megabytes per second on external is is what I'm living with right now. That's my uh, 10 gigabit per second reality with the drives that I have. I am very excited about Gen 2x2. Yeah, colder than a zero RPM uh, fan for the GPU at idle. Well, it's never zero RPM with these intake fans. Forget that. Sorry, PNY. This is not actually zero RPM anymore. Because the case intake fans are keeping it cool, even at idle. There's no more 48C idle temperatures on your GPU. It's going to be like 28C. Uh, I don't know what else to say. We'll get a bunch of testing done. Get thermals, noise, and just bask in the performance of this. The handle, talk about the handle, is very strong. And I'm impressed that it is metal. It's not some molded plastic or something. I too wish that we were still doing LAN parties. We should bring it back. The frag box is back, so LAN parties need to come back too. I just love the idea of this. I mean, I have, a t I don't even want to show it to you because the, the floor around here is just a mess of cables and stacked things, but the PC that's being used for this stream right now is three times the size. It's one of those huge uh, fractal full tower cases, the one that Wendell put on wheels. And mine is not on wheels, so it's just this huge ungainly thing on the floor with a with an unnecessarily big... Uh, motherboard in it, one of those EATX boards and a whole bunch of stuff that is not really necessary. This is all I would need. The only thing I would need to do to a, a form factor like this to make it work for me as the streaming PC would be to put a dual slot card in it and then put a capture card. And I, I love the flexibility of micro ATX for that sort of thing because you, you're not limited to one full length PCI Express slot. You're going to have a, a buy one, maybe two you're going to have at least a uh, second by 16 length, like a full length PCI Express slot, but it's probably electrically only a by 4 or a by 8. That's all you'd need. I use an Avermedia um, Live Gamer 4K, I think is the model. And ever since I started doing that for video, the, the camera feed is a raw HDMI out from the camera directly to that card. I can do 4K, I can do you know, 1080, 60, I've never had it drop out once. And I have had issues with things like the Cam Lake 4K, so. Let's see, Falcon Northwest in the chat. Single solid aluminum extrusion for the handle. I thought it was extrusion, because of the, the cross-section of it. Um, one giant rectangle of metal, 70% of it cut away and recycled to make the hourglass shape. That's, that's uh, the kind of stuff you only really hear about and we're talking about that fruity computer company, you know? Like, spending that kind of money on, you know, the, the tooling, the materials to make a handle. And Apple charges $1,000 for, you know, feet if you want to put rollers on a Mac Pro, so. <sighs> 4x is needed for 10g. Okay. I th yeah. So I, so I guess if if I wanted to make this work for me, Brett, I would have to content myself with onboard 
Doubtless, this is 2.5. Yeah, so the onboard is 2.5G. I don't need faster than that. I don't think I need 10. But what I could do is use, you know, a high end. At some point, there are going, if there aren't already, there are going to be 20 gigabit per second capture devices. If I can go USB C for video capture, or better yet, get the new Sony A6700. And Brett, we'll talk about this offline, but I'm sure that the site would be happy to absorb the cost of that if I buy a Sony A6700 when those come out. But uh, those stream directly 10 uh, up to 4K30 to USB-C. So then I could just hook up the camera directly to USB-C. I could have my 10 gigabit card here and uh, a dual slot video card. It's all you need. The, the, the possibilities for this as a dedicated streaming rig are seemingly endless. That's what I'm thinking. Now, not everybody needs a desktop. A lot of people are, can use a laptop computer. But when you need a desktop, it's like Steve Jobs said, Brett, laptops are cars and desktops are trucks. And not everybody needs a truck. But you know what? If you need a truck, this is one of those like compact, sporty pickup trucks. It'll go anywhere. It's got enough storage. It's got enough horsepower, that's for sure. This is like a, a turbocharged V10 compact pickup truck. I don't know what I'm saying anymore. It's 11.40 p.m. The case is awesome. You'll never get them to do it because why, I mean, why would they sell the cases separately? If you like this case, if you can see yourself owning a PC with an hourglass shaped extruded aluminum handle, if you like the idea of being able to configure a system all the way up to 13900K with a 4090 and something you can carry around like this with a thousand watt, I think this is platinum rated power supply. It's either platinum or titanium. It's it's the SFX all power supply. This thing is three hundred dollars on its own. If you're a DIY, you know, small form factor enthusiast, you already know that. But uh, yeah, it's a very interesting system, and I love that it's micro ATX, God's most perfect motherboard form factor. It's true. I don't know if it's true, but. Sometimes you just need a little bit more than Mini ITX. If you just need Mini, Mini ITX, we've looked at the Tiki before, and you know, there's a million opinions out there on small form factor and who has the best case, but when you actually hold one of these things, it's hard to argue that there, there just isn't a better case in the industry. The Talon case is phenomenal. This is phenomenal. Tiki's phenomenal. It has that the same quality level of the highest end, like Lian Lee. It has, you know, lightweight aluminum, captive thumb screws. With I'm just babbling. Uh, oh yeah, and you can, of course you can have these decorated to your heart's content. Don't do the custom automotive paint anymore, but you can do a ton of stuff with the uh, the type of um, custom graphics that they do now. Custom UV printing. That's right. Custom graphics, UV printing, whatever you want to do. Put your logo on the front. Give one to all your people. You know, you, you have a team that works hard for you, your place of work, put your company logo here, give everybody a frag box, and have a LAN party, and your employees will love you forever and they'll never quit. It's incredible. All right, I don't know what I'm saying anymore, so it's time to go. So this has been the... Uh, Fractal, not fractal, come on, I'm sorry. Falcon Northwest, it's almost midnight. I was talking about that fractal thing down there. Anyway, Falcon Northwest, frag box. It's like it's 2004 again, except it's 2023. And it's about 92 degrees. And uh, it's time to go. I'll be doing a proper video review of this uh, as well. So you can check it out. Close-ups. High resolution photos, panning shots, uh, seductive YouTube generic music playing in the background, that sort of thing. All right. Uh, thank you for watching this Friday night stream. Appreciate it.
and uh, have a great night and a great weekend. And stay tuned for the actual proper review of this case that is more than just an uh, impromptu unboxing on a Friday night. Good night.